uh, with those who are life without parole? Is that not justice? It is not justice, given that you can be on uh, 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 outs you can be outdoors, wreck wrecking, working, visiting, showering, and on the telephone 10 to 12 hours a day, every day. Although you raped and murdered a child, that is not justice, correct? You talked about uh, the need to have a sufficiently persuasive um, death penalty scheme, and then you got into this discussion about uh, the moral, emotional uh, part of the penalty phase. Um, and then you said something to the effect that uh, the jury didn't have to be uh, necessarily convinced that he did it. Uh, they just had to be convinced that he deserves it. Uh, no, Representative Holder Winfield. No, I'm sorry, you, you mistook what I said, or else okay. I, I, I misspoke. Okay, it's one well, or the other. That's why I'm asking you questions. In the guilt phase, they must be persuaded beyond a reasonable doubt that he did it, that he committed first degree murder, that he committed capital murder. They must be convinced beyond a reasonable doubt. That's the standard um, burden of persuasion. My point is there should be even a higher burden of persuasion after they convict before they decide death. It's not sufficient that you're convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that he, that he did it. You've got to be convinced with no residual doubt. That is, even if you have a nagging doubt for which you cannot give a reason, it's still enough to convict, but it's not enough to go deaf. And even if you have no residual doubts, you should still not go deaf unless you're convinced to a moral certainty that he deserves it. Now, there's one other aspect. The, the Connecticut statute ask, is a weighing statute, as you've heard, a balancing statute. It used to be consistent with the model penal codes uh, uh, um, um, the code itself, death penalty statute, now it's consistent with the reporter's version of it, which is you weigh it. You weigh the ags against the mitigators. Connecticut, in my view, is not sufficiently protective of defendants because it says if the aggravators outweigh the mitigators. It shouldn't be that. It should be if the aggravators clearly outweigh the mitigators. Merely outweighing. Most states have required that, that, that it's not just the balance is tipped, that the ags are just slightly greater than the mitigators. It's also not sufficiently protective of defendants who don't deserve the death penalty because it's mandatory. It says if there are either no mitigators or if there are mitigators and the aggravators outweigh the mitigators, then you must find death. It should never be. A jury should never be instructed that they must, under any set of circumstances, find death. They should never say, well, we look at the aggravators, we look at the mitigators, the aggravators outweigh the mitigators only barely, but since they do, we must find death. No, you may find death. May. Never must. So there are a number of ways that Connecticut, I mean, that's what I urge you to do, which is study the statute. I, you know, I, I, I'd hope, I, this is just a starting point. It requires collective wisdom. Read the statement. I've gone through the Connecticut statute piece by piece and, and, and urged certain refinements. And you can come up with others, probably. Well, can, I, and I don't, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I, I want to get through the questions so that others can ask questions. Uh, what I'm having trouble with is, uh, you're talking about the aggr aggravators and, mit and mitigators, uh, and you're talking about uh, what the jury should do here, and you're saying that the jury should not uh, be compelled, uh, however we look at what we compel a jury to do, to do a thing. The jury should, may take an action, but it doesn't necessarily have to take the action unless it feels uh, or is emotion. I'm not exactly sure what the term is you would use, but unless the jury uh, feels uh, that it's deserved. I think that's correct, right? It's deserved and they have no residual doubt of guilt. Even an, a non-rational doubt, a doubt for which they cannot give a reason, but something in their gut says, I'm not positive. It was enough to convict, but there's something, I have this nagging okay, doubt. Okay, I, I understand it. So, and again, I'm, I don't really, I'm just trying to expedite this. So, the part I'm having problems with is, uh, I don't know how... Uh, the way we have the aggravating and mitigating factors, I understand how we can define this. I understand what we're looking at. And it seems to, although I'm not happy with having a death penalty, uh, it seems to comport with uh, the law, uh, Supreme Court decisions. It makes sense to me in, in that respect. What doesn't make sense to me is this is something that I don't know how you quantify it. I don't know how you uh, determine how it happens. And it seems to me that uh, if, if you're concerned with actually having a death penalty, uh, actually operating that way would, uh, maybe beneficially for me, uh, would actually move us away from the possibility of having a death penalty because it, it seems very much arbitrary. No, it's not arbitrary, but you're quite right. It's not quantifiable. The, the, that's what's unique about death penalty jurisprudence, that the penalty phase is unlike anything else in the law because it's not quantifiable. 
And it's not, it's not ultimately strictly rational. It's intuitive. It's emotional. And that's, we can get back to victim impact statements about which this, there's much to be said. But it's, 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 it's partly intuitive. It's partly emotional. You are weighing the value of a human being's life, the defendant's life. Is this a life worth saving or is this a life worth taking? That's in the penalty phase, not the guilt phase. But there's, there's nothing inappropriate about language in the penalty phase that appeals to intuitive understandings, emotional understandings, non-quantifiable understandings. It's perfectly appropriate. That's what victim impact statements are about. Uh, Senator Meyer, then Senator